Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. It's been a while since I've had my morph boas in, vi in a video, so today I want, thought I'd give you guys an update on some of my morph boas and how they're doing and developing. I'm also going to say a little bit about my 2023 morph boa breeding, so be sure to stay tuned. So as you guys probably know, my channel is largely locality boa specific. You know, probably about 90% of my collection is locality boas. So that's my bread and butter. But I love to dabble in the morphs on the side and, you know, get something out of breeding these genetic freaks that I don't get from my wild type, you know, locality type boas. And I know a lot of people don't like morphs who are into the locality boas and they view morphs as somehow some kind of a threat to the sanctity of the boa hobby. But I really like morphs. They, they offer me something that I don't get from the locality boas. And if you've been hesitant to embrace the morphs, I urge you to give it a try and maybe pick up a morph or two as a pet on the side. To start with, I thought I'd show you this lovely adult Junglo boa. This is a 2018 born female that was bred from Peter Messery, and this is a lipstick line Junglo. So she's got the lipstick line called Albino, along with the Hypo and the Jungle. And you can see just how gorgeous her colors are, these deep orangey yellows and reddish orange saddles, and just a really beautiful looking boa. Some of the Call Albinos end up having this really washed out, really pale, kind of off-white yellowish appearance at this age. So you can see how the combination of the jungle and the hypo, along with the lipstick line albino, have contributed to her beautiful color. And since she's now um, about five years old, hopefully she'll still retain this color throughout the remainder of her life. And she's getting pretty big. I'd say she's about seven feet, one of my larger animals. Uh, the morphs definitely grow faster than the uh, localities. I don't have any 2018 locality boas that are anywhere near this size. In fact, my Surinams of this age are maybe five feet long, so this is definitely a big girl. Uh, beautiful to look at. I actually paired her up for the first time this year with my Moonglow male. Uh, my Moonglow male is a couple years younger, which apparently was too young since he showed no interest in her. And even though he's a 2020, so he's about three years old, I'll show you him a little later in the video, he didn't have any interest. So I know that some people have said that you can breed more males as young as like a year and a half old and three feet long. But you know, in this case, it didn't, it didn't work. But anyway, I'll try again next year. I'm in no hurry to breed this girl, but just a beautiful example of a combo morph with these beautiful orange red colors. Next, we have another three gene combo morph. This is a Moran Hypo Jungle. So the Moran, which is an incomplete dominant form of pastel, along with the Hypo and the Jungle. And these genes together give it this beautiful color and this kind of glow to her color. And this is a 2017 female. She actually had her first litter last year. I'll show you some of her babies in a minute. But she's recovering nicely, getting putting back the weight on. She's maybe a little bit, not quite as long as my jungle I showed you, but she feels really beefy. Uh, so hopefully that beef will go into some of the 2024 offspring if I pair her, up, pair her up this coming year. She had a nice litter in 2022 and is doing really well recovering. Incidentally, these three genes are all incomplete dominant, which means you can breed this animal to a completely normal male who has no morph genes and 50% of the offspring will get each gene on average. And you can look up your Punnett Square or go to Morph Market to get a precise calculation. But if you're looking to get into a breeding project and you don't want to worry about recessive genes like albinos and anerythristics where you need to cross two animals that have the gene either as a visual or carrying the gene as a heterozygote, you can always get these incomplete dominant genes which uh, you don't need to have them on both parents in order to transmit them to the offspring. So something to consider. In actuality, most combo morphs are a mixture of recessive genes and the uh, incomplete dominant genes. So you'll probably get something like that. Um, people often will call incomplete dominance co-dominance, by the way. Technically, that's not correct. If you look in a genetics textbook, the definition of co-dominant is a little bit different from incomplete dominant. 
but you know when people talk about co-dominant in morph breeding it's really the same thing as incomplete dominant so i was getting a bit of a workout holding those two big girls so i thought i'd grab a much smaller animal this is a 2022 born super moran jungle so this is a one of the offspring of the female i just showed you and when this Moran gene is present in two copies, it's called the super form. And the super form has this beautiful deep reddish color. Uh, you can see she's also got these irregular saddles that are kind of fused and geometric looking. That's due to the jungle gene. So really cool looking boa. So there's not too many of these super Morans around. I've only been able to find pictures of a few online. And they all look kind of different and I've seen some have kind of more of a deeper red than this one so I know a little bit confused about that but this one was visibly different from my other animals which have a single copy of Moran so I'm pretty confident she is a super also based on the numbers you would expect from the Punnett square from the Mendelian ratios she you know it would make sense that she's a jungle a super since this was the only one of the whole litter but uh, there's a lot that's not known about this Moran gene. It's still a relatively uh, rare and a gene that not, not too many people have worked with. But I think it has a lot of potential. I actually have a Moran pairing this year. And hopefully, um, because both the male and female in the pairing are Moran, hopefully I should get some more Super Morans. And it'll be interesting to see how they compare to this one. But just a really cool looking animal. Been enjoying growing her up and watching her develop. I actually held back one additional animal from that litter. This is a male who is a Moran jungle, just one copy of the Moran gene. So you can see his color is not the red color of the Super Moran, but more of a pastel, yellowy, creamy, kind of tannish color. And he's got these beautiful markings related primarily to the jungle gene, but I think the Moran gene supposedly increases the amount of white on the tail as well. But just a really cool male. I had several Moran jungles. I decided to hold this guy back. I just liked him more than the others, and I wanted to hold back a male. Uh, I still have a couple female Moran jungles available. They're ready to go. They're doing great. They put on a lot of size. So if you're looking to get into a Moran project, this is a great opportunity. You can see them on my Flickr page. The link is below the video description. And so really cool looking guy. Um, his behavior is a little weird. You know, usually he's fine to take out and handle, but sometimes he just gets a little agitated and just starts hissing often when I'm feeding them. I think if he gets his food, he gets a little defensive. So we'll have to see if he outgrows this as he becomes older. Uh, but we'll be also looking forward to watching this guy develop over the years. One more Moran jungle. This guy is actually the father of the two babies I just showed you. He is a 2018 and had his first litter last year with that first uh, Moran hypo jungle female and doing quite well. Uh, he is uh, pretty much full size and uh, you can see he's got this beautiful orangey brown side color, these saddles that are really jungly shaped, really cool looking animal. This Moran jungle male. I actually have him paired up again this year and he, I paired him up with a, a hypo Moran female and she definitely appears gravid. She's looking quite big now. So with any luck, we'll have lots of nice Moran jungle combos and Moran hypo jungle combos in a few months when she gives birth. But please stay tuned and we'll have to see how the 2023 birthing season goes. This next female has really developed a lot over the last few years and she is a hypo IMG boa, IMG the increasing melanin gene. So these animals start off relatively light and then they get more and more color over time. And it's just amazing how dark she's gotten. So she is not quite pure black, but definitely on her way there. And she still has some color and pattern, especially in her sides. And you can see her belly has this white color with lots of black flecking. This girl was bred by Al Brown and she actually has hypo as well. And you think, well, that's kind of opposite. You have the increasing melanin and your hypo melanin. And in this case, you can see the IMG definitely wins out over the hypo. Even though she has hypo, she is very dark. And uh, I've seen some just straight IMG boas that are about this color. 
So sometimes the hypo just doesn't make all that much of a difference. Uh, but of course, she'll still pass it on to her offspring and she can have a, a baby that doesn't have the IMG and just has the hypo. So kind of cool how the genetics works. So this female I didn't handle for quite a long time because she was really defensive and would strike at me. I actually got her out for a video I did a few weeks ago about handling more defensive boas and she really wasn't that big of a deal to handle and I've been handling her quite a bit since then and she has been relatively calm. I mean I haven't gotten bitten, she hasn't struck or anything. She still moves a lot, she's maybe a little bit uneasy but definitely not a boa that really poses any challenges to handle. I'd say she's probably about six feet long right now. Getting pretty close to breeding size. Not sure if she's going to breed next year. Probably not. Uh, but we'll have to see. And I just love the appearance of this IMG boa. I love the IMG gene. And this female is definitely a great example. I have one more IMG boa in the collection. That's this female. Also a 2019 born animal. She is IMG plus hypo plus jungle. So you can see the combination of the jungle and hypo. She's not nearly as dark as the female I just showed you, but quite a bit of dark pigment. But you can see a lot of this, uh, you know, tannish ground color shows through. Not quite sure how much of that is due to the jungle versus this female just might, this might be individual variability. There's definitely a variability in how dark these IMG boas get. And with typically the darkest animals are the anerythristic plus IMG or the motley plus IMG. And she's quite a handful as well. I'm getting my uh, kind of a workout holding her. But uh, she might be ready to breed next year. She's a little bit bigger than the female I showed you. She was born earlier in the year. Uh, she's actually 66% possible hat for VPI T positive. So if I do pair her up, it'll probably be with my VPI T positive male. It'd be really cool if I got uh, VPI T positive um, sun glows with IMG and jungle. That you know the combos would be great and be a great combination. But even if she's not uh, het for T positive, we'd still get lots of really cool boas. Maybe I'll grab that VPI T positive right now. One more bow up for today's video and then I'm gonna have to take a break because my, my arm's actually starting to get a little sore holding up these beefy morph boas. They're definitely a little bit more heavy to handle than uh, my dwarf boas or most of my red tails. But this is a VPIT positive albino. He just shed so he's looking really nice. This guy is a 2017 baby from Peter Messery and you can see the beautiful lemon yellow color. This is a gene that I think looks great just as a single uh, copy individual so he doesn't have any other genes. And that's what I like about the T-positive. It looks great just by itself. And these animals look somewhat natural. They don't scream genetic freak like some of the other morphs. But just a really beautiful looking boa with more or less the wild type pattern and just a nice light yellowish brown tan color. And this guy actually bred this year. He again he was um, paired up with my um, VPI T positive Junglo. And so that female's gravid right now. So with any luck, we should have some VPI T positive albinos, jungles, and junglos in the not too distant future. But really excited about the possible results of that cross. And uh, just a great gene to work with. So as you can see, I don't work with too many genes. I just have a select few that I really like but I'm having a lot of fun you know, pairing them up and seeing the results of the crosses of the different combos. And you know, if you just pick a few genes you really like, there's a lot you can do with it. Um, and unlike locality boas where you have to pair up specific localities, make sure they're kept pure. With morphs, you can pair up any morph with any other morph more or less, uh, which is great because there's a lot of different combinations that you can work with. And just having a few genes like I do, you still have a lot of possible results. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and like looking at these morph boas. As always, shoot me any questions or comments you might have. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.